Hey guys, welcome back to part two of Project YZ. Today we're gonna to take a look at what it takes to fix a screwed up drive shaft, main counter shaft thread. Threads are shot. So we're gonna see if we can fix that because I don't wanna buy one and they're hard to get. But before we do that, let's take a quick look at where we are. All right, quick update. Frame is now the correct YZ blue. I stripped the whole thing down to bare metal and I painted it. I used a Eastwood self-etching primer and this Colorate Yamaha paint out of a spray can. It's pretty, it seems to be pretty durable so far. I stripped the entire frame because I wanted to check all the welds. It had been painted before, just made me suspicious, but everything looked good. I would highly recommend if you do this yourself, get somebody to sandblast it for you. I have a small blast cabinet, but it didn't, fr it didn't fit. So I stripped it by hand. What a giant pain in the neck. My subframe, I didn't. I just roughed up the paint because it was on there pretty good and went over it. Now my theory there is if the uh, if the paint doesn't stick because I took that shortcut, it's just the subframe. It's easy to do. What else we got going on? We got all the parts now ready to go, right? We've got the uh, 144 cylinder with the head and the piston. We've got a brand new hot rods crank down there. All new seals and bearings for everything, crank bearings, uh, swing arm bearing, bearings, linkage bearings, everything new and ready to go. Got a big bag of brand new Yamaha parts, just hardware and stuff that uh, to replace the garbage that was on there before. Excited about that. We've got a shock rebuild kit because the shock, much like the transmission, is not worth buying a used one. The used ones are a couple of hundred bucks for a 10 year old shock. Now this is 22 years old. But a 10 year old shock will bolt right into this bike. But when you get that, you're gonna have to rebuild it as well. All right, so why screw around? You can see the bumper is falling apart. So we're gonna take that apart in a future episode, put it back together. But before we can do any of that, I wanna have the engine back together. And before we can get the engine back together, we gotta fix these threads. Let's take a closer look at that. All right, so this is a pretty common problem on old dirt bikes and street bikes where this is actually the main drive shaft where the threads that hold on your sprocket get stripped. And here you can see, I've got a couple of good threads in the beginning, but then as you start to go around, you know, on this side, there's absolutely nothing. How about focusing for me, camera? There we go. And so, you know, in that situation, you got your sprocket, You've got your nut, and when you put your nut on there, obviously, that ain't gonna work. So what do you do? Well, you either buy a new one of these, right, new main drive shaft, but you can't get that from Yamaha anymore. You can go to eBay, but on eBay, everybody seems to want $200 for the transmission, and you don't find a lot of these by themselves. I say they seem to want $200 because nobody's buying them. The same ones are up there for month after month after month. I'm not paying $200 for that. So we're going to try to fix it. How are we going to fix it? We're going <clears> to... <throat> if we can get this nut off of there again. Right. <clears throat> We've got the right size die to cut these new threads. This is 16 millimeter and the pitch is one, mil uh, one millimeter. So, But we can't cut threads where we don't have any metal. So we're gonna weld a little bit of new metal in here. We're gonna grind it down a little bit, and then we're gonna see if we can cut some new threads. Now, if you have a lathe, this is a reasonably easy repair because you don't have to get nuts. You can weld this whole thing up, you turn it in your lathe, you know, cut it back down to the right dia diameter, and then cut new threads on the whole thing. I don't have a lathe. I have access to one, but I don't have access to it today. So we're gonna try just a couple of little, little tacks around this thing, All right? We're gonna grind it down so that we can actually get to the point where we can cut the threads and see what happens. I mean, I've really got nothing to lose here.
All right, so not the most beautiful welds in the world. I basically just put down a bunch of tacks and uh, I've got a little cleanup from some of the splatter here, but now I'm gonna file this down and see if we can actually cut the threads. I've still got one spot I gotta fill in with a little bit of weld here, but you get the idea. We're starting to build up some new metal that will allow us to cut the new threads. All right, I'm ready to take a shot at this. All right, so after a couple of minutes, for the most part, we've got new threads on there. Now I'm going to, I'm gonna go over it one more time and see if I can get just some of the bottom here. So now when you take the nut and put it on there, now you can snug it back up again. So let's just run that die over this one more time, but uh, we're pretty much good to go here.
that seems to be about bottomed out. All right, and when you look at this guy now, now we've got threads all the way down and all the way around. Now I got that one little gap there. Do I care about that? Well, I only care about it if the nut doesn't fit. And that we're going to call fixed. All right. So we just showed how with a $15 die and a little bit of time and a little bit of welding, I saved myself 200 bucks. And this is going to last a long time. Now, I split the cases because of my main bear on uh, my wrist pin explosion. So easy for me to do this, but what about if you don't want to split your cases, right? So this is bad and it's on the bike. What do you do in that case? Well, you could do the same thing. I mean, when you think about it, people tack weld their sprockets in place all the time. Not the best of ideas, right? Welding generates a lot of heat, but instead of tack welding that sprocket, Right? Just put a couple of tacks on there, build it up, file it carefully the way that I did. And then you might not be able to get that die holder in there, you know, with both handles like I just did. But typically you're gonna have enough for one side of it. And if you're careful, you can spin it, cut new threads where you don't have threads today, and uh, you're gonna be back in business. Now, before we close down today, let me show you what to me is a mystery. And uh, maybe you guys can comment below and help me out with this one. Let's take a look. All right, guys, so here's my mystery. If you recall from part one, or if you didn't watch part one, I tore this engine apart because the wrist pin bearing disintegrated. Now, I didn't know that until I took it apart. But when I took the jug off, that's the way I found things. So I tore the engine down as a result of that. Because as you can see, there's not a lot left of the bearing. I've got the individual rollers here and then a bunch of little shrapnel. Well, counting the rollers, there's slots for 12 and I have 10, which tells me two found some kind of a miraculous escape route. Now I say miraculous because when we look at my old cylinder, you know, for a catastrophic failure like this, it's in reasonably good condition. I don't really see, you know, anything that a, that a cylinder hone wouldn't fix if I wanted to reuse this thing, but I'm not going to. Here's the head, right? The head is a bit beat up, but not terrible. And I really don't see an explanation for what I'm about to show you, right? So we tore the whole engine down and I expected when I got into the crank that I would find some evidence of those missing pieces. No such luck. And if you go back to the first video, one of the things I said was, hey, you know, I couldn't get this water pump cover off because, you know, I had the gasket and a little bit of gasket sealer on there from when I rebuilt it a couple of years ago. So I knew everything was good. So I was like, yeah, I'm not gonna bother that day. But then I realized, well, I should bother because I'm this far into it, it would be silly not to take that off. And when I took it off, lo and behold, there underneath the impeller are the missing two rollers and one other little piece of shrapnel. And therein lies the mystery. Where the heck? Well, I was gonna say, where the heck did that come from? I know where it came from. How the heck did it get there? So, all right, you Yamaha YZ gurus out there, right? So wrist pin bearing explodes, right? Piston, I didn't show you the piston, but I have it. All right, piston's got a couple of marks on it from, uh, from that explosion, but the sides, right, for the most part are okay, right? Not, no big scoring. So my question is, how did those two rollers get out, make their way into that water cavity and get down there into the water pump? 
beats the crap out of me. Now, I've got one theory, and that theory is when I pulled the jug off and that bearing disintegrated, those two pieces made their way down into that water passage at that point in time. I don't see any other way it's possible. But if you think you know, put a comment below and let me know. And then before I close down for today, words of wisdom for anybody who's doing this top end rebuild on any two-stroke bike, forget YZ, right? YZ, RM, CR, KX, Husky, KTM, you name it. If your, wrist pin, if your wrist pin bearing fails and you're curious about what's left in that bottom end, you know, you really gotta do a good job taking it apart and making sure there's no pieces left. Because the last thing you wanna do, I showed you guys, I got a lot of NOS parts over here, a lot of brand new stuff. You don't want to put it back together and have something ruin your brand new job. Now, I know people try to flush these things out when that happens, but it's really not a lot of time and effort. Just tear down the engine, make sure it's okay, and then put it together, especially if it's a race bike. If you've got your kid on it and, you know, he's wide effing open the whole time, right, on the pipe the whole time, I know you guys are like me. You're going to make sure you get it right. So in any case, I hope part two was interesting. Stay tuned for part three when we start putting things back together again. As always, thanks for watching. If you like my content, I'd appreciate it if you like and subscribe.